Hello, my name is Tim Wilmot and welcome to my watercolour demo of a French street scene uh, in the southwest of France, the town of Bergerac. And in this one we will be including some buildings, people, cars. So in this watercolour I'll be covering a few watercolour techniques like laying down a wash, uh, wet in wet, blending your colours, negative painting as in painting around carefully painting around figures and cars and some dry brush strokes. I'll also take you through the normal stages I go through in a painting and cover such things as timing. Now those of you who have seen my previous demos will know that I paint in a loose style slightly impressionistic. Um, this is my reference photo it's the town of, as I say, it's the town of Bergerac in southwest France. I think it makes a nice subject for a painting because of the composition we've got here. Um, the dominant building in the background, the road leading your eye into the picture, the pavement, uh, pavement and the road leading right into the picture. We've got some cars on the left. I'll introduce some people walking on the pavement. And there's the lovely Victorian lamppost, a bit of classic, uh, a bit of classic French street furniture there. Uh, from a watercolor point of view, the scene has got some good points. So we we can play on the the tonal contrast. Uh, we've got the background building, mostly in shade, but there are some highlights there. Uh, we'll we'll emphasize that with some shadows on the roof. And there's the contrast with the tops of the cars, plus there's the coolness of the road, um, contrasting with the warmth of the pavement. And then over to the right, we've got the sort of mossy green um, slipway leading down to the river. So on with the painting. Now I've taken the liberty of popping my reference photo up there in the top right corner just so that we can see what's going on and as I always do starting with initial sketch I'm using a 3B pencil quite soft so starting with the over on the left hand side the churches or background buildings there top left corner and then the left middle building which uh, will have some sunlight hitting the front of that and then the main building on the right hand side here just loosely drawing it in at this stage and the river across the Dordogne, the Dordogne River, then one of these old barges or boats that you see down that way. Not sure exactly what the French word is for it. And the paper I'm using today as I mostly do is Saunders Waterford. It's 300 grams or 140 pounds in weight and this is rough paper I think. I'm sort of alternating at the moment between rough and the medium texture which is not an OT. So now trying to get the perspective right of the road let's start introducing some cars starting from the top a few wheel arches and the lights as you can see the light is coming from right to left So this car 
it's going away from us then a car coming towards us try and join up these two car shapes so they're not all individual if there's lots of cars in a scene not have lots of individual blobs try and have some uh, joining each other now for some people on the pavement again loosely drawn in I often start with the the heads quickly draw in a head and then try and think which which way is this person um, walking turning uh, so that sort of leads on down to the torso and then very just an indication of the the legs so again like the cars figures could be joined their shapes are joined maybe some are out on their own now the lamp post drawn in try not to split any of the shapes right down the middle so if there was a car behind and try not to split that car right in half so it's sort of slightly over to the midpoint of that main car a few windows Not exactly sure what's going to be on the left hand side there, probably not a lot. Another figure. At a slightly different angle. And then now trying to get the angle of the shadows. Edge of the pavement. So I think we're nearly there with the drawing. Got some supports for the boat there. And then the shadow. Not sure if there's going to be a, another lamp post in there. Just a few of those windows on the main building. So that's the initial drawing done. And then starting with, I always start with the sky, or most, most of the time I start with the sky. Now my paper is held down securely with some masking tape it's not going to buckle I'm often asked does your does your paper buckle it does a little bit but not so much as it's going to bother you um, and with this masking tape you don't need to stretch it uh, beforehand um, it's it's sort of it lays pretty flat so I just put in a bit of a, a clear wash there just just pure water and now so the sky is going to be fairly soft. So this is cerulean blue. I should um, point out my palette from the from the very top going down. We've got neutral tint. Then we have some burnt umber, burnt sienna is the third one down. Then yellow ochre, viridian green. Um, we've got then going towards the middle, cobalt cobalt green. Then cerulean blue very good for skies uh, then we have cobalt blue ultramarine blue alizarin crimson cadmium red cadmium sorry light red after cadmium red light red very good for mediterranean rooftops and cadmium orange and then cadmium yellow so back to the sky just loosely 
dragged in some stroke shape using a, a fairly large mop brush. This is an Escoda mop brush, one of the larger sizes, and indicating some clouds there, linear clouds. Now for the background building, so we're actually going to start with the background buildings while the sky wash is still a bit wet. It's going to bleed a little bit, most likely, which doesn't matter. That just adds to the charm of watercolour. So I'm just trying to get the mixture right now for those background buildings, the initial, the initial wash. Um, I'll, I'll go in later on with additional layers for darker, for the darker areas. So this palette where I'm mixing, this area now where I'm mixing my paint, I generally keep my warmer colours there. And then the middle, the middle mixing well is generally for cooler colours like skies. Now I've got a different brush here. This is a Raphael brush. Uh, it's a synthetic brush. It's a really nice mop brush with a very good point, which I'm utilising to my advantage there. Just turning the brush sideways. So yes, as you can see, it's starting to bleed a little bit into the sky that's still quite moist. Now this will dry quite a bit lighter. It might appear quite dark at the moment, but this will dry a lot lighter. Now for the main building rooftop. It's great having that flat edge on this mop brush. Great for rooftops, straight lines. It's also good if you're doing any curve shape like, like domes or bridges or tunnels. Uh, it's a lot easier using a, this sort of a mop brush to have a nice sweeping curve. So as I'm doing this roof, I'm adding in different colours as I'm going along. There's all sorts in here. Ultra, ultramarine blue, burnt sienna. Constantly mixing. Bit of yellow ochre there. Which I'll just uh, touch, just touch the top of the yellow ochre just to introduce a tiny bit of it into this first wash. So it's going to bleed a little bit on that right hand side, which doesn't matter. So rooftop of the left hand building. Now we're almost getting into now the walls of the buildings. So lots of the buildings 
in this part of France, they're characterized by a sort of warm ochre, yellow ochre type colors. So that will be probably the dominant, the dominant color I'm using in this wash. Now I don't want to have too much detail on the left hand side there. Got to be a little bit careful now when we're coming down to the cars. Again, this sort of brushes, it makes it so much easier. Little tiny trough there where the background car is sort of almost joined to the, the main car there. So the roof, that initial wash of the roof might bleed down into the wash of the wall, which again doesn't matter. We'll, we'll be going over this again with another layer later on. Now this bridge is just going to be very loosely painted not much detail at all there's a suggestion of an arch there and the actual surface of the river itself Now after, after that bit of the bridge, we've got a bit of dirty, darker color in the brush, which is quite useful as we come down to the base of the building. It's gonna get a little bit darker. Careful bit of painting around the figures. Doesn't often matter if, if uh, I paint over their faces because that can be painted over the top with um, a, a darker color or a bit of um, thicker, thicker paint for a face, so it doesn't doesn't matter too much uh, to go over that. But obviously, if if these figures are going to have lighter clothing, we want to make sure that we do retain some of their their shape by not painting over them. So the road, this is going to be quite cool. So predominantly. It's blue, bluish. And then the pavement is going to be a little bit warmer, so I'm adding in some alloys and crimson first of all. A little bit of ultramarine blue. So I'm actually, there's no need to do any negative painting around their legs here. Their legs will be darker, pavement will be lighter. Adding a bit of light red to the pavement as we come down towards the far foreground. So notice these random strokes that helps introduce some different textures and areas in that pavement so it's not so so flat and uh, consistent. Introducing a little bit of variation into it 
because of the different the different directions of those strokes and then the right hand side is this sort of slipway down to the river on the right it's uh, it's a textured surface but it's there's lots of moss and grass there and weedy bits so that was the first wash um, allowing everything to dry now before we go on to the next stage we're going to introduce some darker tones into the picture now I'm using a slightly smaller brush here no nope, I think I'll change my mind still on the Raphael So we're getting a darker tone now. Burnt sienna, alizarin crimson, a little bit of ultramarine blue. So that left hand building needs to be quite dark. Try and emphasize what we're, what we're trying to do now is um, make, making this darker so it's going to show up more the front of the building where, it, where the sunlight is catching it. And we're also giving a bit of by making that darker we're giving a bit of definition to the left hand building which is facing towards the sun going quite dark now so I'm adding in the neutral tint color you could use Payne's gray as another alternative but it's just darkening anything that we add to it sometimes I will well most of the time I will when I'm using neutral tint, add a color to it so it's not just a boring, darkish, grayish color. And these old buildings they won't be uniform in color they're going to be they're going to consist of lots of different tones and hues so that's where I'm adding in extra colors while it's still moist or you might also lay down a wash and then maybe with a tissue just lift off some random areas just to add a, add a bit of texture to it Now for some shadows on the main building. Which is, it does emphasize the composition with the, the angular, these angular shadows coming from chimneys or protruding um, extensions coming out of the roof we will get a lot dark as we come down to meet the people Yeah, let's grab let's grab some 
neutral tint. So come down, maybe a bit too thick there. Yeah, let's add something else to it. Bit of yellow ochre, alliz alizarin crimson. And it's as I'm laying it down, it's it's moving up. There's a slight angle on the paper of about ten degrees or so. So it's just um, as I'm laying down this, it's just bleeding into the still damp areas of the rest of the wall. So now we'll turn our attention to the cars, the vehicles, and generally speaking most cars are not bright, they're fairly sort of greyish, dullish, so I'm picking up any sort of colour that we've got in the palette at the moment. Leave a little bit of highlighting there on the rooftop. Tiny bit on the right hand side, and then that background car. So, we've got a slightly smaller brush now, synthetic brush. Again, this is an Escoda brush. going to do the shadows of the car so while the car while the cars are still uh, moist or damp I'm bringing in that bringing the shadows to them so they're, they're going to bleed together Just, just adding those shadows there suddenly transforms the picture a little bit, starting to come together. We'll put in some darker windscreens as well later on. So, some more details to the buildings. While well, I've got this brush, I often use this sort of size brush for bits of architectural details so this boat do a long stroke left to right Could actually have done this with a, a smaller muck brush, but as I've got this one to hand, and the boat's not too not too large. And then the shadow underneath. Just did a few of those supports. careful to join some of the top of the boat to the background of that bridge and in the background Now with the 
tissue. I'm just lifting out little areas here to add a bit more interest. Doesn't make it so stark that um, if I've gone in too dark while it's still moist um, you can just lift it out with a, a paper towel or tissue. So I'm back with a smaller Raphael now and turning my attention to the figures with some faces. And then this main figure on the right We'll have this one with a, a dark jacket. Just a slight indication of some legs. I find if you overdo it or spend, spend too much time on the legs, it can actually not make them so realistic or you lose, you lose that feeling of movement. Whereas if you understate them or leave little little gaps, it just gives that hint of some movement. So figures are going to be a little bit paler in the background. So do their just finish off with their legs and then we'll do their shadows. It's that top mixing well. I generally have all the darks up there. Shadows, really dark, shaded areas of the of the painting. Keep all my darks up there. So I'm using the side of this smaller mop brush. Got a nice edge to it. Add a bit of form to the right hand side of the pavement. And the left, not too much. A bit of lost and found. Not exactly sure what I'm going to do with that white patch I've left on the left hand side, probably just, just leave it. As I say, the danger is if I, if I start turning my attention out, making it into a car or something, then it might may distract from the balance of the of the painting. So I think it's got a a fairly decent balance with that car there and put, just dabbing out and the, the figures on the right hand side. Right, car windscreens. If I do have quite a few cars in a scene, I might maybe not do all of the windscreens in a in this darker colour. I might leave one or two out just so so they're not too repetitive. Get some cadmium red for the brake lights. So I'm going to let everything get really dry now. Um, the lamp post will be one of the last things I do. But it's still just a little bit damp there on the on the walls of the background buildings. I want to make sure it's absolutely dry. 
um, so that when I come in with the lamp post, it's not going to bleed into the background building. So I'll just get out my little hairdryer, just go over that area. Thankfully I've blocked out the noise of the hairdryer. Not get too close to the masking tape, otherwise it might start <laughs> might start lifting up before I want it to. So back to this lamp post then, which you've got to be fairly careful with. So I'm using the small synthetic brush here. And then careful with this downward stroke. So because that background building now is totally dry, it's not bleeding into it. And with that dry brush stroke on the right hand side, it's leaving a few little pot marks where maybe the, the sunlight is coming to it. Well, I've got, well, I've got this brush. I'm just dabbing around the picture, just adding a few more details as I just into different areas. Now the shadow of the lamppost, taking into consideration the little bit of a dip there off the pavement, then across the road. So we've got that that staggered line. I'm just joining up some of these figures with shadows. more formed that building. Not adding too many windows. So you'll notice that I don't have too much water on this brush. It's almost well, it's quite dry. Now yeah, we've got to finish up the top of the lamp post. A pretty sort of iconic subject to or object to include in any French scene. A lamp post with the three lights on top in that sort of Vic Victorian ornate style. And then just picked up some a bit of it's a bit of white gouache that's had some other colours mixed in with it so it's not not pure white, it's sort of a opaque um, greyish colour, like a sort of light light battleship grey, um, just to add in a little bit of form to those the lights. Now to help with the to help with leading your eye into the picture, I've added a few more dry brush strokes. We're emphasizing the slope down to the river here as well, adding in a few shadows behind some of the white bits I left on the initial wash. And I often 
on roads often add in a few more dry brush strokes just to give the indication or give give the impression of some maybe maybe skid marks tire marks all helps just leading the eye into the center of the picture Careful not to overdo the background. Of course, the other typical thing if you have on French buildings are the shutters, which I'm trying to uh, indicate on the that left-hand building. Right, a bit more form to the supports of this boat. Got to get a mast in as well. Little short, little short mast. Do it at an angle. Hopefully in one go. Getting to the final stage, stages of the painting now. When I'm thinking about anything I might have left out and think about the highlights now as well, which I'll be using, I'm using here uh, white, white paint straight out of the tube with my that's that same smallish thin synthetic brush, generally speaking a small small brush, and then slightly moist, make the brush slightly moist, dip it into the tube. I'm using white gouache here, and then careful not to overdo it, but concentrating on if if it needs it, the tops of the figures' heads and then their shoulders putting maybe a little bit more highlight on the side on the shoulder that's towards the sun a little bit on those lights of the lamp post sometimes I'll I'll put it on the sides of lamp posts as well where there's particularly a dark background So I think we're nearly there. As I say, let's just try and add a bit of sunlight hitting the right hand side of these posts. That just improves that a little bit, gives it a bit more of a three dimensional form. And there we are. So here is the finished picture. And what I've done here is just taken a photograph of it. This is a different, I've just used a different camera from, from my uh, webcam that I've, I've used for this video. Uh, so the the colour is a little bit uh, truer 
to what they were in reality. So I think it was it was a good subject for watercolour. You've got the tonal contrast between I emphasize, emphasized um, the difference between the the tonal difference between the background buildings and the highlights of the cars. We introduced the people. We um, had a group of people there and uh, again a few highlights on them contrasting with the darker background. We've got the shadows running from right to left, some of which are connected. The boat, the boat laid up on the right hand side connecting in with the background as well and the the f uh, right hand figure and then the road and pavement leading your eye into the composition. I could have perhaps moved myself slightly to the left or the right. I could also uh, in the reference photo there was this there's a hut on the right hand side there so my reference photo in the top right hand corner there's a there's a hut um, a little kiosk on the right hand side there casting shadow across. I could have actually introduced that or a, a shadow across the foreground might have added a bit more to to that area. But overall I'm quite pleased with it. It's um, trying to show off all of the well a lot of the main techniques of a watercolour, the initial wash um, wet in wet or allowing different colours to bleed into each other which is what which is what watercolour does sometimes you you can't avoid it and then laying down the wash of the darker background buildings using dry brush strokes as well um, body paint where where I did the, the the faces of the figures and using the white gouache for highlights and street furniture, the the posts, the mast of the boats. So hopefully you like that. If you want to catch or get a notification of my videos, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, if you want to see more of my paintings, then please go to my website, timwilmot.com, T-I-M-W-I-L-M-O-T.com. But thanks for watching, and we'll catch up with you on the next video, coming soon, hopefully. Thanks very much for watching.